here I am in the car just for some peace of mind because it was getting really loud so I just decided to come here and film here instead wow it, it's nice it's nice getting outside even to, to walk for a few seconds is, is pleasant but yeah here I am in the car I was thinking of learning about the muscles in the arm first before making this video but for some reason I just set I was setting up the phone to make it in my bedroom but um yeah <laughs> I did that so I just thought I'd just go the whole way and make the video so here we are I wanted to talk about death and also my eating routine so for a, a while now maybe ever since I had that trigger of intense fear since 2021 that I spoke about in my mental health low which you can find more about if you're interested in the one year life transformation journey video I made back in August last year that could have been a major trigger for this fear that I'm experiencing at the moment now that I think about it and I really, um, I really think it is Maybe I have to work through that a bit further, but um, I'll, I'll, I'll address that probably off camera. But to get to it, I've been uh, yesterday. I experienced quite a lot of fear, a lot or a lot of distress. I made myself go through a lot of distress, thinking about the fact that I do one day have to die. <sighs> These thoughts they come in on a regular basis. Occasionally, I, I'm not sure if it'd be once a week, but maybe once a week to two weeks, I'd have these sorts of thoughts and I'd put myself through so much misery thinking these thoughts. I'd feel so tense and stressed out and with the help of watching a couple of videos from Tracy Marks, I, I don't remember, but I think it's someone who claims to be a psychiatrist. And um, with the help of with with the help of therapy in a nutshell, I've been able to calm myself down about that a bit more. Again, I do it again and again. And one way I did was by thinking when I came back from the gym yesterday, what harm could death do me if I've lived? In brackets, my life to the fullest. If I've done more than I could have ever imagined and got to a place where, in my mind, I've made it. See, because people would talk about, like my dad did the other day, with this place we're moving to, saying that with this place I'd be moving to, I could, I could really make it there compared to where I'm at at the moment. For me, if there was ever such a thing, It'd be achieving pristine health. I know what it's like to not be in a place where I'm not physically or mentally healthy and I absolutely hate it. Hate it. And I'd like to see... Well, as I've been going out of my way to improve my health, I have put myself in a more ideal life position than I ever have done before. And with that in mind, I'm achieving what I've been wanting to achieve for a long while which I didn't get much during my adolescence which is peace of mind mentally and also physically this as a teenager was not something that I'd think about whatsoever but you live and you learn as as you age you you grow mentally even if you develop into something that's a lot less ideal compared to in your younger years the way how you think is going to change as your brain develops and as you experience more regardless of whether you go to many different places or you stay idle in the one place that you might have for example lived your whole life but anyway getting back to it <laughs> when I've achieved this this state and kept it for a very long while I think I might, I, I predict, I might not mind passing away, even if it were, were by 
unfortunate circumstances I'd be able to feel comfortable knowing that I really have lived really have lived my life to the fullest and I've done what I've wanted to do with this life that I have I'm not sure how that will go but I think I'd be in a much healthier place mentally having things going for me and really uh, uh, finally allowing myself to enjoy life I'm going out of my way to make that happen but right this instant my life position is not ideal but I'm I'm okay with it being this way I'm not sure if I've said that before but I'm okay with it being this way for now because I know I'm working toward it I um, I'm sending message after message after message to my to my work coach at the job centre I'm really going out of my way to provide CrossFit coach services which is what I've been wanting to do I know I'm really going for it so although I might not have thought this before recently I can say that I'm actually okay with this situation that I'm currently in I voluntarily put myself in this position and with it I've been able to figure out what I want to do not necessarily for the rest of my life but for a very long time maybe a decade plus and then from there I would have evolved my mind I would have grown a lot and what I would want to do would be a lot more different compared to what I'd want to do now or what I'd imagine I'd want to do at 35 for example it'd be completely different compared to how I think about that when I would I would have uh, turned 30 for example so when that time comes I'll I'll deal with it but for now I'm just working through these things bit by bit, day by day. Feeling more comfortable, which I felt very, di I felt, I found very difficult to do with this distress from fearing about, from trying to control or from trying to undo the fact that I one day do have to die and that might be a, a state of nothing no sight, no hearing, no no ability to grow anything. But it's not something that I can control. And if I have lived my life and I've prepared for my death through having my will set up, buying myself a coffin, I'll be as okay as I could be on the matter. I think I probably wouldn't be thinking about it whatsoever past a certain point once I've really, really grown and gone to this place and this this place outside of the UK and maybe even out, outside of Europe, for example. I think very basically all of this distress that I'd be making myself feel, that I would be making myself feel, it is because of me. I think this could have been... I could have built the foundations to do this through having no income. I haven't lacked direction. It's not that. It's just... Uh, because I'm financially incapable of fending for my own, I feel stressed and that stress would show rear its head in many different ways through situations that I wouldn't want to be a part of or things that I wouldn't want to do that I've just made up in my mind and that I know I would never do random things stress about real life situations and and so on I'd 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 have I'd feel these feelings and have these thoughts at bare minimum partially because of the fact that I have no income whatsoever that's going to change with 
the direction I'm heading in. So I'd eventually be getting universal credit money. From there, I'd then be doing, well, or so I think for now, part-time work as a as a gym instructor in a general weightlifting gym to then not only do that, but also volunteer as a cr- uh, CrossFit coach to then work as a CrossFit coach and eventually build up not only build up my CV but build up my my income allow myself to live in a more financially healthy state have it brought together for example have a budget I haven't got one yet that I'm currently using I've built so many in the past but with no income I have bigger fish to fry than to make a budget that I wouldn't keep to anyway because I don't have the income there to keep to it yeah those are the thoughts I've got at the moment and I'll um, connect it to the next topic I'm thinking about by saying this not only could could these um, thoughts about why do I have to die one day come about from having no income and feeling stressed from that I'd also, I think, feel so much misery because there's this idea that the stomach's connected to the brain and what you eat regulates or sends askew uh, your mood. It it regulate food regulates your mood, and because I haven't been eating healthily, I've sent it askew because I physically feel like crap from what I'm eating from food my mum will cook for example and from the sandwiches I feed myself that aren't the the most high in nutritional value I feel like crap after eating too much of low protein foods cereal Cheerios for example that I've been having regardless of how much I like the taste because I've got used to it now I'm only eating those sorts of foods to just exist I'm not eating those sorts of foods because they're my they're my first option and they're what I want to eat they're what I want to eat enough with the fact that I have no money coming in at the moment but that's soon going to change I'm setting myself up for the most I'm setting myself up to become the most financially comfortable I've ever been in my life with the highest income I would have ever earned in my life and um, this would also be, I'm also set myself up to manage my finances the most I've ever done in my life, which I would be able to do more easily with, for example, a financial advisor, but I'll leave that for later when I have the funds to, to access such services. But going back to the, this food thing, because of what I've been eating, I've been feeling constipated, and that's a problem. That's not just something to undermine. That's really really serious in my opinion because it shows that what you're eating is causing you physical pain now if it's doing that the food that you're eating surely mustn't be healthy for you whatsoever it can't be benefiting you it must be at at bare minimum more to our detriment than to our benefit eating those sorts of foods on a regular basis which with these with these responses with these bodily functions and responses i'd say they are now this is my choice to eat these foods because I there are fruits there but I can't be eating fruits all day I'm just waiting I'm waiting for that universal credit claim to come through and then I'll use that to eat more healthily for sure now there's one thing about like how I did in the past felt a bit nervous shopping for the first time because I didn't know what I was doing and I wasn't willing to accept that I didn't know what I was doing and that was okay like getting the trolley for example even though now I've done it so many times it's really, it is really basic um, I don't like being incapable I, I think this being incapable to shop financially incapable to shop 
even though I know damn well I'm physically and mentally capable of just going of going to the supermarket, it's I think way worse because with unease you can work through you can work through that pretty easily, but with this financial incapability, I've had to be suffering. I've had to make my body suffer because I didn't do enough to eat healthily throughout this entire time as uh, whilst my bank balance was going down from the student loans that I, that I hadn't used on accommodation because I left early. Now, as I say, this will soon change, so I'm not I'm not really all that bothered. I I might I might have hope for once. I might have hope that things are gonna get better. And by better I mean healthier. I am gonna become healthier much sooner with the help of this money coming in. It wouldn't just be the claim. I would as I say have the part time job and then that progression that I spoke about not only now with part time then volunteering to become a CrossFit coach but um, I spoke about it in the last video I made talking about the plan that I, I've I've gone and made again for how I want to go about making money yeah I haven't recently made a plan about how I manage my finances but at the moment I don't think it's even worth it because I've got bigger fish to fry. I know to make a budget. I know it'd be more sen yeah, I know it'd be a sensible decision to find a financial advisor that knows what they're talking about. I know it'd be sensible to find maybe even a life coach, for example. I know it'd be sensible, well, a life coach that knows what they're talking about and has both their in best interest at heart and my best interest at heart. But I know that this these things would help me. And I understand that in order to make more, I have to spend more. For example, I had to invest in these level two qualifications to be able to have more money coming in than i would have ever done before in my life but i'll I'll leave that on i'll leave that for a later time i'll be able to move how i'll be able to do what i want to do once i become really financially capable it's only a matter of when not if really it really is and I've got a specific I have a specific date as to when the claim would come through so I've got my when I've got my why and also have my how for how I'd improve my financial health now really it's just a matter of waiting there's only so much action I could put in before I I, I'll benefit from it. Excuse me, my traps from yesterday's workout have been feeling really sore. I did a hundred ring rows on the gymnastics rings yesterday and I didn't stretch off, but I don't think it's that. It could have just been from how I, sh how I um, what do you call it? How I slept in bed. Yeah. But anyway, very basically, to summarise, I think the reason why I had that fear of death the way I did, like the thoughts like why do I have to die is because I didn't put a name on what that was. Therapy in a nutshell did just that. She called it negotiating. Why is it that I have to do this? And um, Maybe subconsciously thinking, is there a different way? Would I be able to have a different, a different fate? Do I have to die in agony? Does it have to be eternal pain? Like how religious says, re religion says with he uh, hell, for example. I, I'd see the agony in death being, basically being very conscious in your state of just the abyss and, 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 and blackness and not being able to do anything, look anywhere, walk anywhere, talk to anyone, etc., that's where my agony that's where my I 
give myself so much distress trying to avoid that fate if it if that is how death works but i'm not i'm not sure there's no way i no way i know but maybe it is peaceful maybe i, I don't know I, I really don't know but even now when speaking about it i think i could have felt a bit of distress and that that tracy woman whoever some american woman with um wavy hair going up to her neck she was she was saying that these sorts of thoughts could i could be making myself think them over and over again due to due to having a, what she called a deficit in attention control meaning because i i wouldn't be going out of my way to focus on one thing and then allow myself to move on to another thing without thinking about that thing again once i'm done with it because i wouldn't do that i would be finding it very difficult to move on from the thoughts that had caused me so that I'd experienced so much distress, emotional distress from, and that I put onto myself. Yeah. And as for the food stuff, I think that could have been added onto it outside of financial stress because it's causing me physical pain. I therefore would have no problem in thinking that it's causing me mental pain and emotional pain too. Well, thoughts provide physio physical responses so emotional pain is um physical for me and also uh, mental as well i get very phys physically tense like this i i clench my hands like this i don't clench my jaw i don't clench my jaw i clench my hands and um i also feel a lot of tension which i find difficult to deal with in my sternum in between my pecs yeah Right, oh, I made this video. I've done what I wanted to do, so I think I'll move on. It's soon. I'm, I think I'll stretch my legs for a bit. Oh, also the sedentary lifestyle, just basically being bed all, in bed all day, like how I have been today, would play a part in it. Seeing as I'm basically just waiting to be able to improve my financial health and to further improve my physical health with the help of the job, for example. Yeah, but anyway, that's it. I'm done for now. Um, going out my way to focus on something's really help reduce that fear that I'd have, that distress I cause myself thinking about death. I I find it physically calming, so I can just keep on doing that and keep on focusing on going down this path with the online health coaching and also going out my way to develop just general life skills or ways of thinking that would really help benefit me, like planning ahead or um, anticipating certain things happening, for example, through through chess. So doing that might actually be physically calming too. But uh, so, so could music, making music, I don't know. But anyway, I'm done for now, depending on which sort of music I make anyway. But I'm done for now, so... I'm going to stretch my legs and then go to this gymnastics class going on today. That'll... Um, I won't record, even though I said I wanted to make videos of me in the gym every day, seeing as I'll be focusing on that class. But I'll um I'll go I'll record a video tomorrow. Um, actually, no, I might be somewhere tomorrow, so I probably have to I probably do that at home. Yeah, but I'll be recording myself exercise from now on, so that I'm countering that sed sedentary lifestyle I'm making myself live. But anyway, I'm done. Cheers to moving forward from these sorts of distress-inducing thoughts that I put on myself and knowing how to deal with them, which I'd go out of my way to do to um, through allowing myself to consciously worry or ha have concern for things every single day by writing it down or just maybe even thinking about it to begin with, which I thought about um, in yesterday's community post that I made. But yeah, I'll, <laughs> I'm going to go to that class, stretch my legs. So cheers to moving forward in life and feeling more peaceful and being able to function healthily working towards pristine health because it's i'm gonna love it peace